Wow. How is it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the NXT TakeOver War Games review right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian WWE podcast that talks about NXT and No Holds Barred on anything we say. Pun intended, you can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. You can also follow myself at Real Kyle Masters, and you can follow my co host at Corporate Cappy on Twitter as well. If you would like to follow us on Instagram, you can follow us on, at No Holds Barred WP, all one word. If you want to listen to us on the go, we are available to listen to on iTunes and Stitcher, and is also available on here live and afterwards on Spreaker. Spreaker is a fantastic podcast app. Make sure you go download it for all Android and Apple devices. And if you want to watch the video version of this podcast, it's available on YouTube.com slash NHBWR. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, that bell icon for all upload updates. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And today for the NXT TakeOver War Games, I am joined by my co-host. He is the boss, the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself. Corporate Cappy, baby! Oh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Cupid Girl said it right right in the chat just now. The Beauty and the Beast is here, and she is speechless after tonight. Holy shit. Holy shit is right. Oh, I don't know. I, I, think, I think that was a pretty mediocre paper. I think that Survivor Series is going to blow it out tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. Second time in a row that... At a big four pay per view, I don't even—I can't remember if Takeover Orlando was even that good, but so far, SummerSlam and now the Survivor Series weekend—it it hasn't even happened yet. But Takeover is going to beat Survivor Series. I'm just—I'm just letting everybody know right now, it's done. And uh, Mason Dunbar making his return to the chat. What's going on, Mason yeah, like Dunbar? That. And we also oh, got here we go. We got Under Siege over here. There we go. <laughs> the host that runs the West Coast. And that is Michael Chow TV. He has an awesome wrestling podcast as well on Spreaker. Go check him out, guys. He, the champ, is here. MCTV is ready to make a difference. Did like a three-hour podcast last night with James from Dadass Podcast. For their guys, go check it out. That is live on their channel, guys. Holy crap, though, tonight. Uh, this might turn into a three. I could talk about what happened tonight for three hours, for Christ's sakes. My you God. Can't about it, how bad it was? <laughs> I can't rant about tonight. There's <laughs> actually two, I think a couple of things. I could semi rant about because I, I it's just how I feel about it in my opinion on him. But um, wow, was it ever great tonight? My God, they they definitely brought it, man. It's it's like I think Triple H is purposely doing this on purpose now, <laughs> just say, oh, yeah, you only want you want to change a couple matches around Survivor Series? Okay, okay, okay. You know, let's just take a look at the the Takeover script. Yeah, let's make ours a few changes. <laughs> um, I don't know, maybe. The, the main roster should take notes from this that they don't need pay-per-views every month. I kind of like the fact that NXT has one like every two or three months. Yep. Because was... you can actually build good storylines and good feuds unlike mm-hmm. just giving us a pay-per-view every month and rushing crap. Yep. Like, I, I, I just... I really like the, the fact the that... The matches NXT feel different. The matches feel more... Like, meaningful. You, you, meaningful, yeah. It, 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 with WWE, it's, it's too rushed... There's not enough time for builds. Although sometimes they do a good job with some of the short builds that they do, like they like some of the continuing feuds too, like they continue from one pay per view to the other. That I can get all right with, and that I can get behind a little bit. It's the ones that they kind of just do a three week three week build for, and then they kind of forget about it after. It's like you, they don't care. Like what makes you get invested into those? NXT they 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 decide on a feud, and that shit lasts like two months long. And you get so invested in it, do such a good job of hyping. And we were saying it before the pay per view even started when we were watching the pre show. Now, whoever does the promo videos for NXT, holy shit, man, that guy is over the top. Like, he, the, how come the bet the videos are so much better for NXT than the actual main roster? The promo videos? Yeah, they're way better. Oh, yeah. It's insane. I don't know who makes them, but good on them. Maybe they should take over for Dunn. Up there, in the production room. I don't oh know. man! Oh well, whoever was uh, the light guy today kind of fucked up in the main event. At the one point when they were letting out, uh, AOP were the second team that got let out of the shark cage. They still had the light turned on on the the light for uh, uh, Sanity's cage, even though it was supposed to be AOP. Because the refs all looked at AOP ready to come out, and then the light was still on the other cage. I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? Who's out? Even the crowd's going. Uh... 
<laughs> and AOP gets let out. But um, yeah, yeah, good pay per view tonight. Really, really good. I enjoyed it. Um, matches that I thought were going to be good ended up being over the top good and just great all around. And before we went on the air, we kind of both agreed that um, Valentin Dream and um, Alistair Black stole the show. That match was match of the night for sure. I, although how how epic and chaotic the main event was, wrestling wise and story wise, and just the way they presented the match, Alistair Black and Velveteen Dream stole the show. That, well, was, that was insane. Well, we'll get into that in the review. Yeah. So basically, how we said it in the predictions is exactly how the match card went. <laughs> Exactly the same order as we predicted it is exactly how the match card went tonight. Which is fine because that's exactly how it should have gone. So they did it the right way. And we opened up with uh, your boy <laughs> Cassius Ono. Don't ever say my boy <laughs> and Cassius Ono in the same sentence again. Sorry, no, I'll, or I'll, I will. I'll... Or I will call into the show next week and Big Show's theme will be playing. <laughs> okay, okay. Sorry, let me rephrase it. Your boy Lars Sullivan taking on yeah! Cassius Ono. My new favorite guy. <laughs> Gene Snitsky. Yeah. I'm ready for him to go. I'm ready for him to go. It wasn't my fault. Just once. Just I want to hear him say what the crowd would go nuts if you ever did that. Or I seen someone tweet, oh, I'm ready for Lars Sullivan to just kick a baby already. <laughs> Hashtag thank you, Lars, for putting an end to this thank, abomination known thank as you, Lars. <laughs> known as I don't even know Sacramento Kings player wannabe. I don't even know what to call him. They he but. did putting all that aside. He this was a better match than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be really quick, and it was just gonna be okay. Just something to, you know. I mean, sometimes they have to get the beginning of the match. They needed the first match of the show to get the crowd into it, so they need to do something. And they did. They did an all right job. It was an okay match. It wasn't great. It wasn't over the top like all the other matches. But I thought it was a decent opener and. To just show how dominant Lars is now, because because basically up until now, Cash's Ono has only been, has been his best test. Like it has been his greatest test so far. He hasn't yep. had anything better. So, in a way, it, oh, there are some points in the match where it did look like Ono probably could have won. So, although we 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 know what we feel about him, <laughs> we <laughs> we have our thoughts and opinions on Cash's Ono. He did put did a good, good job of carrying the match. Like he didn't carry the match, but carry on with the match to make it uh, deliver <laughs> for a good opening contest. It definitely so, wasn't a two minute squash like I no. thought it was going to be. But then our your boy Lars Sullivan pulling through and uh, I, can't, I can't forget what they call this finishing move, but uh, it's intense, man. He, he he drives the person down to the ground with such force. So Lars Sullivan, man, is basically as a lot of people put it on Twitter too, um, the Braun Strowman. Of NXT right now, like he's he's getting the same nice. sort of treatment. He's just mowing through everybody right now. I, I don't. I'm interested to see where they go from here. Like, does he, does he get an NXT title match? Obviously not, because Cian Almas is the champion. Yeah. So like, it's tough. What is? He... I'd say like, he's got to face. I mean, Kash Zona was the guy that you know, he faces his own his own side. Like you know, you you think he he go against people like his own size. Ono was basically like maybe not muscular in mass, but you know they're basically the same size. I can't really see anybody else. Maybe one of the people from if they're not going to use them, maybe one of the people from Heavy Machinery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have them feud against uh, Otis Dozovich. Both or both of them. Have have yeah. if you're going to make Lars look dominant, have them feud against both those guys. Have it uh, culminate into a match and actually have Lars Sullivan fucking beat the crap out of both of them. Or if they're going to go along with the whole sanity thing and have Eric Young and Alexander Wolfe be the tag champs, maybe have Killian Dane be have a few with them. Yeah, I can see that. Maybe even Killian Dane goes against uh, Lars Sullivan, man, because Killian Dane looked awesome said. tonight. Oh, that's what you just said? Fuck. Sorry, I was reading the chat here and where people are saying Lars Sullivan versus Alistair Black Street versus Streak. Hmm. That could be a good idea. A, I don't think it's a good dynamic with those two. To me, that doesn't make sense. Black. I, I want to see Blackface dream again, which we'll get into that when we get to that. But as for the opening contest, uh, Lars coming out on top against Cassius Ono. Don't know what the hell Ono's going to do now because basically that was his opportunity to get back into the title hunt. So Good. Who I cares? Mean, you you kind of have to restart. Right? Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. 
Go back to the Indies. Or maybe he gets called up to the main roster. Maybe Vin. He, he, sorry, he's probably a guy that Vince McMahon could see him. Like, oh, I can sell this guy to the PG crowd. I could sell this guy. Oh, no. Oh, no. People can, you know, the, the kids can sing it along with him. And everybody on the TV goes, oh, no, where's my remote so I can change the channel when this you guy's know, on the fucking TV? Cassius Ono is a good main event superstar. And I don't mean the main event of a show. I mean, like, the show main event. <laughs> he can he can thrive on that show. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, yeah, the show main event. How about yeah. he just be the dark match guy? How about that? <laughs> That's what basically yeah, the dark matches is the main, or the, the dark match that could happen after, but the main dark matches are main event that happened before, and they get shown on Friday night. <laughs> okay, we're talking way too much about Cash Asono. Let's move on, okay. please. So we moved on from that, and we went right to Aleister Black versus uh, Velveteen Dream. Oh my god! Epic match, epic, epic match. Um, it's my, this might be on the border of getting in the Slammy nominations for NXT Match of the Year. Yeah, it's it's this almost is close. There. This is close with Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate because this was – I knew it was going to be a good match. I said this was probably going to be a good match going into it, but I didn't think it was going to be that good. These guys delivered. They fucking delivered. They brought it. The presentation was phenomenal. They worked the crowd so good. These guys killed it tonight, both of them. Like, the crowd was so invested into this match. It was insane. Velveteen and, Dream made a believer out of me tonight. I'll, go, yeah. I'll give him that. And he was so over tonight. The crowd was so behind Dream. It was insane. I'm like, how are they behind this guy? <laughs> Maybe Houston's <laughs> just one of those goon crowds. And speaking of the crowd, I noticed it. I'm sure all, everyone out here noticed it. There was fucking nobody there. You look out into the distance of the crowd, there's nobody. Like, absolutely no one. There's points where even they showed the people, you know, the certain WWE superstars in the crowd. You can see behind them, there were so many empty seats. Holy shit, That's man. That's unfortunate. For such a good event tonight. Yeah. If that was in Toronto, dude. Because <laughs> when we went, at this point last year, we went to NXT TakeOver Toronto. And it was sold out, man. That thing was basically sold out. It could have been sold out. There wasn't an empty seat in that whole arena. I remember going there. We were up in the 300s and all the seats were taken. So, like, that's sad. Houston, man, step it up. I I hope they make they make they make a list of like certain cities that they you know that maybe we shouldn't go back here for a takeover again, maybe for like a live event but not a takeover. Cause that was basically the capa- that capacity could fill a live event arena. That was bad. And they got one of the best takeovers we've ever seen. Yeah, basically, it's, it's been one of the year. It's been one of the takeovers of the year for sure. I don't know if we're gonna have a separate ca- category for the Slammies like take what <laughs> takeovers of the year. <laughs> But uh, no. this match, un- un- unbelievable, man. There Even before so the match m- started, we had Alistair, Bl- or not Alistair Black, uh, Velveteen Dream channeling his inner Rick Rude with his uh, pants with his opponent. Yeah, on ravishing him. Rick Rude, man. Like, literally, I think he idolizes him because he also does the, the elbow drop, the same elbow drop that he used to do, and he does the taunt, too. So I, I'm assuming he's one of the guys, like, you know how your girl Sasha idolizes um, Eddie Guerrero? Yep. And uh, Kevin Owens kind of idolized Eddie Guerrero, too. He uses the same kind of frog splash. So I think that's what his inspiration was for wrestling. Maybe it was Ravishing Rick Rude. I'm going to have to look more into Velvetrine's backstory. So, um, but yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. And But yeah, it started right off the bat, man. Like, they're taunting. Um, Aleister Black doing that, his signature flip off the ropes into the, the sit-down thing. And then yep. Velveteen Dream taunting him and sitting down too. And then Velveteen mm-hmm. Dream or uh, Alistair Black countering that into his signature, like, you know, worm pose on the ring. Like, th- these guys <laughs> were just, like, killing it presentation wise. And when it got down to wrestling, they absolutely beat the fuck out of each other. They literally were kicking each other's heads off, pulling off, like, the, the one move that Velveteen Dream pulled off that I can't believe he didn't win with. Oh my god! I don't know what kind of DDT that was, but that was insane. <laughs> I thought I thought he snapped his neck. To be honest, I was like, "Holy fuck!" Right, how do you not win off this move? How do you not win? I know. Like these guys put on a performance tonight. They killed there was, it. There were so many near falls that like you you could have thought the match could have ended like at least like six times. And you know it happens rare. It, you you know when it's a good match because it, the crowd only does it for good matches. Have you ever noticed? There's the one point in the match where both of them are just dead in the crowd, and they give them a standing ovation. That only happened, and you never see that in WWE. You only see that in NXT. 
they give him a standing ovation. You know you got a really, really good match when the crowd's giving you a standing ovation. They got one like three quarters down down the match, and I'm like, yep, yeah, these guys deserve that. These guys are putting on one of the matches of the year so far, and incredible finish. I didn't think Aleister Black was going to pull off, but he hits Black Mass basically out of nowhere and just kicks Velveteen Dream's head off and pulls off the victory. And we got something at the end after this match. We got something that I didn't think... With me... Now, this is where I said I had a couple of critiques. With me, I know it was said in a way, but with me, I don't think we should have let Aleister Black say anything just yet. I think we still should have kept him silent, but he grabs the mic, and uh, I'm trying to remember what exactly he said, um, but it, it rhymed, and he said Valvatine Dream's name. So he actually said... I don't know if it was out of respect... Or it was something they told him to say, and ah, to me, it's just like I don't think they should have said anything. I don't think especially, they should have mentioned anything. Especially if the feud continues, because these guys need to have a rematch. You have a match like that; they're having a rematch, but without a shadow of a doubt, they're having a rematch. These guys, and I'm all for them having a rematch. It's going to be probably just as epic as what we just seen tonight. Yeah, well, I hope the rumors aren't true where Aleister Black's getting called up to 205 Live because that'd be fucking awful. That'd be, like, the worst decision imaginable, this guy on 205 <laughs> Live. Like, are you kidding me? Give me a break. Okay, so he said, enjoy inf- infamy, Valveteen Dream. Hmm. Interesting. But still, I agree that he shouldn't have said anything yet. Yeah. I know that the way he said it, I know I get it, but like I don't think it's it's. I think it was too soon. If you're gonna, if they they should continue this, and if you're gonna continue, you think you should wait till the end, or I don't know. Maybe you, when he finally loses, they have like a certain. I got had this thing going through my head when I was watching. I'm like, what if they had a, a certain type of I quit match, where Valentin or uh, Alistair Black doesn't say I quit, or they have to say each other's name, and that basically means that they quit the match. Like a say my name match, a say my name match. Yeah, <laughs> I could see that. Oh yeah, the the, bet, the crowd the whole time was like doing say his name, say mm. his name. Like, are you kidding me? And they popped when he said his name in the freaking after the match when he grabbed the mic. The say his name match. I couldn't believe how behind this goon they were, man. Like, it was, it was nuts. Just, but this match was exceeded at all expectations. Like. Yeah. And it was match of the night. It was match of the night, 100%. As, although, I'll give credit to the main event for being epic. It, this was match of the night by but, but far. But like I told you, like there was no like stipulation. There was no title on the line. Like How does NXT do this with just regular one-on-one matches on pay Ended up stealing the show like with the the uh, Gargano and Cian Almas match. Right. And then this match. Like, nothing has – not <laughs> – it goes to show that something doesn't have to be on the line. You know what I mean? You can build a good storyline without a title. Yep, WWE, please take notes. You, <laughs> you, that started to be like, WWE does that a lot. That's like so typical WWE. So the fact that NXT can do it and you, you can see the end result out of it, insane. Absolutely insane. So I'm looking for, forward to the future of this. I really hope it's not over yet. And those god awful rumors of him going to 205 Live, I really hope that never happens. But we got money. And Velveteen Dream, I'm telling you right now, a lot of people are giving him a lot of credit over Twitter, and I'll give him credit too. Velveteen Dream is turning into one of those money superstars, man. And apparently I read that Vince McMahon only watches NXT when TakeOver is happening the same weekend as the WWE event. So this is basically the first time that he's ever seen Velveteen Dream. Mm. And he has a what match he, like that. And you can be like, wow. I can make him a jobber on the main roster. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can bring him up, and people will be so excited, and I'm going to put him against Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas. Those and are I'll some make good him matches. A baby face. Yeah. <laughs> and he can face Dolph Ziggler in a best of eight, best of nine match series. <laughs> I know anyway. who would want to see Velveteen Dream is your girl Cupid Girl is going nuts in the chat over this guy right now. <laughs> No, she wasn't the only one. I saw a lot. Yeah, keep it PG. (laughs) Easy, big fella. (laughs) Anyways, we moved on from that to the fatal four-way women's match for the vacant NXT Women's Championship. And before this match even started, we got a shot in the crowd of Asuka, who was at ringside for this match, with her friend Funaki 
And yeah. Finn Baylor. Finn Baylor. But Funaki, I popped so hard when I saw him. Yeah, man. He should be – literally, I texted him, like, he should be NXT, NXT's number one announcer for sure. That would be awesome, man. He should. He should. Or Maybe be like, like Dasha Fuentes. And he'd be like the guy that Kari Zane interviews – gets interviewed by. Yeah, she could be like his per, her personal announcer. Fucking right? Funaki. Funaki. <laughs> Did you get you get a can you imagine a pop seed get a every takeover that Kari Zane would go to? <laughs> <laughs> he's oh, like man. he's like her personal ring announcer or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this match though, holy can we just talk about before the match even started, Peyton Royce coming out, like I had to change my pants. Holy moly, man. Ty Dillinger, our boy Ty Dillinger. I'm t- I told I texted Cappy this. I'm like, when we go meet him at Access, I'm gonna tell him like you are one lucky son of a bitch. He talk about getting a perfect ten. This guy's got one for sure. Literally, like that was. Oh my! I can't! I can't! I can't! I it's can't just, even handle how no. ridiculous she looked. Like it was just like it wasn't even fair. It was over. She the got top. a huge pop too before she like when her music hit. She had one of the louder pops of the women. All four women got. It, it's incredible. All four. No one was getting booed in this match. <laughs> everyone cheered for everyone. <laughs> yeah, but, um, for sure. Yeah, it was great. And uh, D- Mason, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to your question when we talk about that championship match. That's actually a good question. So uh, keep that. In, I'll keep that in mind. Um, anyways, this match. So we had Ember Moon, Nikki Cross, Peyton Royce, and Kari Zane with a new was, theme song. Yeah, she's got a new theme. You're like, oh yeah, winning confirm new theme song. <laughs> <laughs> Which wasn't the case, but anyways. Um, Ugh. I was shocked that Billy Kay left. Like I thought she was for sure going to be at ringside. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought that maybe when she came out and she looked that good, I'm like, ooh, she looks way too good to be at ringside for this entire match. I think that's a lot of makeup, <laughs> and that's she's yeah. she like you can tell like she was over dolled up. That 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 was just an entrance look. Um, but Kari Zane's new theme song, yeah, not a fan. I'm sorry, that's not CFO Dollar Sign's best work. With the fucking the pirates singing in the background, oh my god! I would have just dealt with her last one. I know her last one wasn't the greatest either, but this one's not even better. Like this one's terrible. I have a feeling they're going to be changing it again because the crowd had zero reaction to this. <laughs> like it was bad. It's like um, as bad as Drew McIntyre's new theme. Yeah, they uh, booed Kari Zane loud when they broke up Peyton Royce's uh, pinfall. I remember that. Um, but this is a good match. This is actually a pretty good match. Um, I knew there was going to be a couple of spots. Where there was going to be a multi-woman spot. Uh, Nikki Cross took a massive bump on the outside, and she got power bombed by Ember Moon, like directly onto the outside. I'm like, Jesus Christ! <laughs> and then Ember Moon doing the suicide dive to two people at the same time. Like these girls put it all on the line. I th- this was exactly what I thought it was going to be. I didn't think it was going to be anything bigger than what we got. Maybe a little bit. Maybe they should have let them go a little bit longer. But um, the finish. The finish was crazy, but before we even got to that finish, there was a spot in the match where Peyton Royce looked like she was going to get the win, and the crowd seen it. And I seen the ref. I swore I saw the ref count three, and he kind of like tur- as soon as he did it, he kind of turned to the the bell keeper and said, "No, no, no, two, two. I think but it was because Kari Zane came in late and didn't yeah. break up the count in time. You can see when she got in, she hit the the bottom rope, so it slowed her down a little bit. So I think that's probably what happened. But yeah, yeah my, it was a little botched. My boy Drake Warrens over there with his huge orange spray tan was my God. looking at his abs. I think he was more orange than the NXT belt. Like he, he was more orange was... than any Oompa Loompas, man. <laughs> I think he was. A new, I think he, he could have been an Oompa Loompa for Halloween if he dyed his hair green. It was brutal. But yeah, that, that was that was kind of botched. Yeah, and I don't know. A lot of people were complaining on Twitter, like, "Oh, that should have ended the match." Botch or not, like you, you, you have to go with the what, what you do. Like you can't just take it back like that. Because I, I went and looked at it again. It looked like he hit the mat for three. Well, I'm probably sure he pulled a Charles Robinson or something. And I'm he sure automatically a heel referee out of nowhere. NXT smart, they'll twist it. I'm guaranteed. Peyton Royce is probably going to like show you, going to be showing the footage, like not next yep. week, but the week after to William I Regal. Won. I said I won the match, yeah. and she'll probably Ooh, get a rematch. Twin voice, oh, but. Nikki Cross, this is a perfect match for her because it's just complete chaos everywhere. She's just like all over the place. God, this was nuts. Like she was, <laughs> she was literally all over the place. But this, it was a good match. I actually enjoyed it. I, I wasn't bored at all. And then we got to the finish, and it looked like I thought Payne Royce was going to win because she went out and she kicked uh, 
Kari Zane down. I'm like, oh man, like she she runs back in the ring quick. I'm like, okay, we're gonna get a, a setup here. And then she gets hit in the chin by uh, Nikki Cross, and then she her head is 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 resting on the shoulder of Nikki Cross. And then Ember Moon gets up from being attacked by Peyton Royce on the turnbuckle and does a double eclipse to both girls. I'm like, <laughs> damn. And then she pins Nikki, and I'm like, oh my gosh, she won the match. Ember yeah. Moon won the match. And I you, picked you saw, her, but like, saw, I didn't think she was going to win. <laughs> you saw Kari Zane trying to get in the ring, but she yeah. couldn't. It was late. Wow. Oh, Ember Moon is our new NXT Women's Champion. Well deserved after the year she's had, like I said in, in the predictions. Where she got so close to beating yeah, Asuka. Like so close. And there was no one going to beat Asuka, let, let's be honest. We knew at the time that Ember Moon wasn't going to be the girl to do it. Like I always don't go for her, but I knew she's going to win. But wow. Well, did, though. Uh, and winning it in her home state too from uh, Dallas, from Dallas, Texas. It was in yeah. Houston. Yeah. So it wasn't technically her hometown, but it was her home state, so it was mm-hmm. good enough. But yeah, then after the match, I really liked what they did after where Oscar came in and gave her the title, and like the whole thing came full circle. Like some people might not like that shit because it kind of breaks kayfabe for Oscar, yeah. but whatever. She's not on the on the brand anymore. You're not so gonna I'm have her kick fun. Amber Moon in the face. Like she's not. She's not gonna. They're not gonna continue this feud. Like <laughs> maybe they could have shaken hands and he kind of like dragged her in. You know what I mean? Like and kind of did one of those stare downs, but. I don't know. I a lot of people didn't it, like honestly. it. I didn't. I thought it was pretty cool. I thought it was a lot. It was, it was a respect thing, and they hugged it out, and you know. Yeah. Oscar passing the torch after coming full circle. I liked it. Yeah. And Amber but Moon. That... We'll see what happens. Wow, Amber Moon. Now. Like, where do they go from here? It's it's crazy. I thought for sure Kari Zane was probably going to win. They're going to roll with her. But and... she didn't get pinned, so it just leaves it still open for her to still be a dominant, maybe undefeated woman in NXT. All four of these girls had a great performance. Like, yep. they all had a great match, and there was points in the match where I thought all of them would had a chance to win. So, well oh, yeah. deserved for all of them. Yeah. Um, um, but I, there was something interesting that they said after that. This is only the sixth women's champion on NXT. Really? Yeah. So wow. like, they when they get that title, they carry it for a while. <laughs> yeah. So they've had Paige, Charlotte. Sasha, Bailey, Sasha, Bailey, Oscar. Becky, Oscar. So this is six, yeah. So yeah, Becky Lynch never won it. That's right. No, she had her opportunity, but she never won it. So that's uh, it's a pretty elite company. Ember Moon is joining now, so we'll see what she's able to do with her reign. If it's going to be as long as those other five, I don't think it's going to be Oscar length, but it's probably going to be for a while until they figure out what to do with Kari Zane. Maybe they wait for that WrestleMania weekend at that takeover her to win it. I don't think there's any way she's losing it at uh, whatever takeover is in Philly for Royal Rumble. I and think she'll retain it at that. A lot of people are calling for a heel turn from Ember Moon. Mm. Because they, they they said they have enough of a face champion. But, but you just had Asuka, who was kind of a heel. But you know, Asuka wasn't really a heel. She's just someone that kicked ass. She was just kind of a tweener because she was yeah. both. She would beat heels and faces. So... But. Again, yeah. wanna, we'll see what they do from here, but we're not going to find them next. We will have to wait for the week after. Um, I and mean, we'll see the direction. I have a feeling that Peyton Royce is not out of it yet. Car yeah, Zane's I can definitely out of see what you, what you said where next week she's going to come out and say, like, she got screwed and stuff like that. Yeah. She'll probably be the first challenger to Ember Moon. Yeah, it'll I probably be, like, on the NXT taping in a couple of weeks. So Yeah. But two thumbs up for that match, too. Yeah. And then we moved on from that. To the NXT Championship, Drew McIntyre versus Andre Cien Almas. And um, I do have a question for Mason that I've already put in the chat um, after we are done talking about this match. So i got to remember that. Um, good match. Really, really good match. Uh, these guys put out, again, another match that they put it all on the line. I had my, my doubts going into this match. I didn't think that Almas and Drew McIntyre could pull off this kind of match because they're, they're two different f- fighting styles. And I think the size advantage of McIntyre would kind of pull back from what we've seen Almas do against other superstars in NXT. But these guys actually did a good job. Uh, they did a really good job. Selena Vega did a really good job being that heel manager and even getting involved in the match. And then Drew McIntyre catching her and flipping her back on the apron and saying, like, no, no, no. And then, like... It kind of led to a distraction attempt by Almas, but then like Drew countered that too. So, damn! Like, 
that was great. But this match was good. I really, really enjoyed this match. They, they, these guys did a good job. For what we could get out of Drew McIntyre against a guy like Cian Almas, they did a really, really good job. And again, no, a Drew lot McIntyre, of near finishes. Drew McIntyre definitely stepped up his game against a, an incredible wrestler in Cian Almas. Like, I didn't yeah. expect McIntyre to, like you said, to have that type of match. And Selena Vega, man, my lord. Oh. oh. Mm. Austin Aries in. Another lucky guy right there. Yeah. And then, like I said, McIntyre's theme, he just loses hype for me with his terrible I, theme. I tweeted, I so miss the Broken Dream theme. I really do. Like, I think it would just help. It would have just helped him be that more credible of a champion. I think it would actually help him get more hype. I know the crowd is already sort of hype with Drew McIntyre, but I don't know. It feels like he would be, again, like what you said. It just, it'd feel better. And you... <laughs> I'm just picturing back to that promo video where they teased you so hard with the beginning of the song oh, in that yeah. promo video. I thought for sure they were going to do it, and I was so, so disappointed. <laughs> uh, Let down of the year right there. Yeah. But, yeah, that this match, again, another match that uh, exceeded the expectations. And Selena Vega, like we said, she was going to get herself involved. And, my God, did she ever get herself involved in this yeah, match. That one, the one point where I thought was going to be the end of the match, like I said, like I predicted that she was going to get involved and then that was going to cost the uh, Drew McIntyre the match. And when she when – it, it, was, it was funny. I was actually laughing because Cian almost goes and I thought he was going to grab a chair, but he ends up grabbing the title belt. And he's, like, holding it up and he's celebrating. And the crowd's like, Yeah! <laughs> But he was like, he wasn't charging towards the ring to hit it with it. He was just celebrating with it. <laughs> what the fuck well, there, is he doing? But it was, there was a reason for that. Yeah, yeah. that's what we got after. But I, at first, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> he thought he won on that near yeah. fall. Like, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, what was he doing? And then I see in the ring, Selena uh, Vega going in there, and then she gives the freaking Hurricane Rana DDT, like the thing that Kalisto does. To Drew McIntyre, I'm like, oh shit, like this is it, this is it. And he runs back in and he pins it and he kicks out of it. And I'm like, damn, like that was – or he gives her – actually, he gave him the, the, the DDT there, the finisher. Yeah. And he kicked out of that. I'm like, my God, like this match is way, way better than I thought it was going to be. And then, and then even then, later in the match where McIntyre, you look like he thought he was going to win it. And then Zelina Vega just puts his uh, – almost his leg on the rope. I'm like, oh, yep, here we yep, go. Yep, yep. <laughs> So she got involved a lot in this match. And you went nuts when uh, Almas kicked out of the Future Shock DDT. Yeah, I couldn't believe that. I thought that was it. At that point, I'm like, okay, it's over. Like, he hit it, and he kind of, like, at, like pile-drived it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, Almas' body was almost straight up when he did it. And I'm like, damn. Like, that was almost like a, a pile-driver. And he kicked out. I'm like, okay, there's no way. You can't kick out of that. Like, Again, this, this and the and the dream and the Alistair Black magic. There were so many parts in the match where you thought it was over, and it wasn't. And they did a good job. Maybe not presentation wise, but for what the story was between these guys, they delivered. And the, well, we the ending. Wow, <laughs> wow, I that threw me off. And it was bo- okay. It was Boschel, and again, that's what I said before. The size would come into play here. It was supposed to be almost his uh, finisher from the top turnbuckle. But because Drew McIntyre is a big motherfucker and almost isn't, it looked a little botched, but it still looked insane. There's something happened there because I think McIntyre was hurt, and you pointed it out after that. I think he was hurt, and when the ref got in, he was like, uh, "The trainer was in there too." Yeah, the train that he was met, he was talking to someone backstage, and McIntyre looked absolutely pissed off, like he knew he was hurt. But uh, our... it kind of it kind of reminded me of when Cass got hurt. You know what I mean? Like when yeah, he was, he like, was really he knew off. and he knew yeah. But Almas pins after that and actually wins the match. We have a new NXT champion. Like, uh, wow, shocking! That was like one of the most shocking moments. My of the jaw night. dropped. I honestly was like, what? He actually did it. There's no way. I'm like, they gotta continue with Drew McIntyre. This, his story is too good. They have to continue with it. It's too early, and they actually changed the title. But Ooh. see, this, this is one part tonight that I had a problem with. I, as much as I love seeing Almas and he deserves to have a title run. I don't think they should have taken the title off of McIntyre after he just won it from Rude at the last yeah. uh, the last takeover. I think to me, I, can, I didn't agree with that. I and I understand. I, I agree with that. I understand. I, I think I kind of see why they did it because McIntyre after this, it's tough to go against someone like Adam Cole if that was the direction they were going to go into after this. 
Because the size difference, I think they could get a better match, and probably it's their goal is to is to keep building off. Like they have a good match. Okay, what are we going to do next takeover? We got to do something better than what we just had. That's kind of like what looks like what NXT's goal is. They got to try to make the next takeover better than the last one. So I'm thinking with Almas, you're going to have a better match against a guy like Adam Cole rather than Drew McIntyre. So. Are they going to do heel versus heel? Or are they going to turn Almas face or like what? They might turn Almas face. Do you see the reaction he got? Man, I think he's going to continue to get that reaction. He sort of gets that reaction on the NXT tapings. When he's not doing something heelish, he's getting that reaction. So, but do you think he could still be a face with Zelina Vega doing like that? He could be a heel tweener. manager tactics. Like, yeah, it's tough unless they ran an angle where they he kind of like dumped her to the curb and now he has the title. Like he doesn't need her anymore. He'd be like, I don't need you anymore. I got the title. Why do I need you? But, I don't know. It's wow. tough. But, but yeah. Selena Vega, man, MVP of, like, the year for sure. Like, she's definitely winning manager of the year. Like, there's no mm-hmm. doubt about it now. Yeah, you're right, Cuba Girl. Okay, uh, he was part of NATO's uh, – they're in the group in New Japan. I remember that. I remember reading about that. You're right. He, they, they might have to be proud. A lot of people were proud. A lot of people were tweeting uh, to Almas and congratulating him on winning the NXT championship. But as we said before, um, we think McIntyre is hurt. Um, out. I, that did not look like a look of somebody that just lost a match, like yeah. like just losing a match. Like, I think he knows that some, that he did something. Like, you know better than anybody if you hear or you feel something that it's broken or you did something to it that's not yeah. good. And I'm kind of worried about McIntyre right now. I think he might have did something to his shoulder there. And like you said, it was it was bound to happen with this with you know McIntyre being so like big and you know somewhat like he's not like Jinder Mahal stiff but like when you have that kind of like when when you're that kind of person you're you're obviously going to be a little bit more stiff than somebody that's you know skinnier and or maybe they go they want to do Adam Cole but maybe they wait maybe Roderick Strong takes it off on this eventually Mm, yeah maybe he gets a I know you want it the reverse role I know you want you want Roderick to beat Adam Cole for the title but maybe they go in the opposite direction. And I really thought that Cian Almas and Gargano didn't had unfinished business still too. Yeah. So. And that's what uh, goes back to Mason Dunbar's question. He says earlier in the chat, do you think that they have Gar- Gargano in line to be the next person t- to challenge for the NXT Championship against I mean, Cian I would Almas? I love that, man. That would be awesome, but I-, I just don't see how you can keep guys like McIntyre and Cole out of the picture while it's Almas and Gargano. Yeah. Unless they're going to continue with the the after what we saw the war games with Sanity and Undisputed Era, and maybe they keep Adam Cole out of the main title picture for a little bit while longer, but it's it's going to be interesting. It, 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 I think that's what makes almost a good champion too. You have so many different outcomes, that you, or so many different things that you can do with this guy, and he's you know it's going to be a good feud because you have Selena Go. Or, <laughs> I was going to say Selena Gomez, Sel- Selena Vega. Is an incredible manager, and she's been in, literally the spark that sparked Cian Almas into this main event caliber superstar. And I can't believe it, man. This is nuts. And I love on the promo video where they showed like Almas partying with girls, and then like she came along and like got him at like strictly business, and yeah, like got him turned around instead of just being a party boy and taking L's all the time, taking losses. Oh, Mason now, Dunbar like, actually put it in a good perspective in the chat. Maybe Gargano beats Almas, and Almas then goes against Adam Cole, and Cole beats Gargano, and then Gar- uh, Cole goes against Strong. And that sounds how... like that. That's like eight months worth of NXT yeah. television. <laughs> hey, maybe that's a long, maybe that's a long term plan. Like these guys just got here, so it hasn't even been a year since these guys have been in NXT. Eh, until Vince wants to take them all up and make them all jobbers or put them on 205 Live. No, I think I think Triple H is like, no, these guys are the untouchables, Vince. <laughs> yeah, you can't touch said these guys. Was untouchable. Yeah, now but got... she lasted, but she lasted at least two or three years. So I think these guys have a long way to go. So we'll see. Yeah, and speaking speaking of the match we didn't get, I still haven't seen any spoilers. Luckily for that match. Thank God. I didn't think of it until the end of the show. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm like, thank God I didn't see any of them. But, uh, yeah, Gargano's going to face Pete Dunne. And I can't wait to watch that this Wednesday. I'm going to pray to – you know what I'm going to do? If, if if I'm tweeting live tweeting for Ron SmackDown this week, I'm just going to sit on my profile. I'm not going to look at the news feed. I'm just going to sit in the profile section and just tweet from there. 
<laughs> so I don't see anything. It might be the best option. Yeah. So I can't wait. I cannot wait for this Wednesday for Pete Dunne and Gargano to go at it for the UK title. That probably sh- could be another match of the year candidate, depending on how much time they give him and uh, how will we get out of it. So, yeah, Almas, champion, insane. Can't wait to see what we get out of him going into the future, man. It's going to be nuts. Yep. Well, well, well deserved. Definitely shocker of the night for sure. Yeah. Um, And into the main event. Speaking of shock, shocking the system. We have the War Games match. And <laughs> the the explanation we... they had to give at the beginning. Yeah, I didn't have to get the... Okay, we got it in the pre-show, and we got it in the beginning, and then they had the announcer even say it. Um, definitely different than what I thought. I actually was under the impression only two people were starting, but it was three, one member from each team starting. And I thought it was they're only let one member from each of the shark cages in at a time. I didn't think it were all three going to be let in at the time. Or let in... Or the other two are going to be let in right as soon as the horn went. So um, this was actually a pretty good idea. I liked it, and I said in the predictions I had to wait and see how this match went and see how the flow of this match went to judge whether or not we should have another War Games next year. 150% we are having another War Games next year. This was a fantastic match. Holy shit. Did it ever turn into an ECW type match when Sanity came in there? Oh my god! Because <laughs> it started off slow. I'll admit it, the beginning of the match oh, bored the shit on. out of me. Before we get into that, we got to get into Roderick Strong doing his best Kurt Angle impression of being <laughs> the most out of place person in a faction. Oh my god! What yeah. the fuck was that? I saw it perfect on Twitter and I forgot to send it to you before the show. Someone screenshotted the, the the picture of them all three of them coming out in those stupid ridiculous outfits <laughs> and then someone's like um <laughs> I can't say it <laughs> is this when you're trying to fit in in school or something no <laughs> come on get it out yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> it was like oh fuck now I'm forgetting it Oh my god! But... It's, like, it's like, what do you mean when you? It's like, what what do you get when you mix the shield and something else together? And it was like this. <laughs> oh my god! I was dying. I think oh, he. I, I think he it. looked more at a place than Kurt Angle did with the shield. He like, did. He did. Because when he came up behind him, I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, was this really necessary? <laughs> the, the pairing from the beginning that I said, it just didn't make sense from the get-go. Like, Roderick Strong with the AOP just makes completely no sense to begin with. But they actually ended up still pulling off an okay match, even though the the the, the pairing of this team made no sense. But, no. but like I said, the beginning of this match... <sighs> I, it, yeah, it was just... You basically had the three leaders of the teams as the three. Oh, that's it. It's like, what do you get when you combine Sister Abigail with the shield? Because <laughs> they're wearing those mesh oh, things over yeah. their heads. <laughs> but yeah, you had the, the three leaders of each group or faction, I guess you could say, starting off. God. And the the way the War Games match looked, I was like, wow, this looks intense. The Cage had a pretty cool, interesting theme song. It, it came out to, like, War Sirens. It was like... I was expecting the classic Cage coming down. Yeah, boom, 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 boom. I need to download that for my WWE yeah. playlist. <laughs> the Cage theme. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, the three leaders of each, I guess you can say the leader... Of each uh, starting out in the match. And again, it started out slow. I'm like, okay, there was a couple of cool moves. And then it, it literally started to pick up when they let in the first team, which was Undisputed Era. They got let in first, and the, the, the numbers game took off from there. Basically, that's what they centered around was uh, Undisputed Era just kicking the shit out of Eric Young and Roderick Strong. And, man, Eric Young throughout this entire match, perfect. The guy sells. Just like Shawn Michaels in Stone Cold, if not better. Like, the, his sell jobs, if you watch closely at Eric Young, how he sells stuff, it's, it's just incredible. Like, it could be a nice kick to the gut. Expressions. Yeah, it could be a kick to the gut, and he goes down, and he's, like, shaking like he's having an aneurysm. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's just, like, going nuts. <laughs> but, uh, and then it's, 
Then it started to get intense, and that's where I, the, I mentioned the botched lighting. AOP <laughs> gets let in second, but the light was still on on the Sanity's cage. And I'm going, what the fuck, man? Like, turn it off. We, they're not coming out yet. <laughs> And Even they, the ref was confused. He was like, "Well, do I unlock this door or this cage? Do I unlock this one, or am I?" The... Then the other ref just comes in. No, no, this one. Yeah. Then, then they turn off the air. Like, okay, now we're we're less confused now. <laughs> um. So they let them out of the cage. They go storming in the ring, and then just shit just hit the wall. Man, these guys just came in and just cleaned house. And they were beating the crap out of everybody. Even Roderick Strong was joining in. There's a lot of crazy spots. There's the one spot where. They literally threw Adam Cole across into the other ring. And then they did a backflip to Eric Young to into the other ring, but he almost missed. Like he his edge of his back scraped against the rope. Like he could have missed and went right into the middle and that would have been ugly. Um then there was the spot where Adam Cole was on the top rope in between both rings and everybody else kind of got like superplexed off of it and he just kind of was the last one standing in the middle. And he just kind of like, because he was just sitting there, and then he raised his hands, and the crowd's like, Adam Cole, baby. They did that so many times in the match. And, uh, what do you call it? And then we had the table spot where AOP set up the oh, this table. Oh, this, that was way later this. in the match. I'm, I'm not even there yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> that... well, before we get to that, your girl Tiff joins the chat. Oh, uh, Tiffany on, from Dad Ass Podcast. Guys, awesome relationship-based podcast. They're live every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Go check them out and go follow Dad Ass Podcast. James and Tiff on Twitter as well. Plugs in. All right, back to the match. Um, uh, you know what? I want to congratulate, or no, sorry, it's not congratulate. Thank Tiffany and Daz Podcast for helping us reach a goal of 500. They promoted the shit out of us last week on their or this week on their show. So thank you, thank you very much. Out of Tiffany. appreciation, you got to give her yeah. a Finn Baylor. Yeah, I'll give you a Finn Baylor appreciating. Uh, thank you <laughs> from that ass podcast and guys. We've reached 500. We're 502 subs on YouTube. Huge, 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 huge for the podcast. I got plans for a 500 episode coming soon. But anyways, back to the War Games match. They finally let Sanity out of their cages. And fucking Alexander Wolf went like full speed down the ramp. Killing Dane just walking. <laughs> like Wolf was already at the ring before Killing Dane could get out of the cage. <laughs> and then they just go nuts. They open. They 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 take the ring apron off and just start pu- throwing in weapon weapons all into the ring, <laughs> like everything they could find. And the crowd's training. We want tables. And then he goes and grabs two tables. Killian Dane throws them into the ring, <laughs> and they just go nuts, man. There is like this turned ECW so fucking fast. It was incredible. yeah. They had the the garbage can with like the the chain in there. Yeah, freaking Kyle Riley gets like suplexed onto it. <laughs> Didn't didn't somebody like put someone in a submission hold with the chain? Yeah, um, Ad, uh, Alexander Wolf got submissioned by Kyle O'Reilly. It's one of his like signature uh, submission moves, but they used the chain with it. Man, Alexander Wolf became the Ric Flair of this match. Like that guy oh just got God. absolutely destroyed in when like they every set up, possible. Yeah, they set up that double table like next to each other, and Alexander Wolf German suplex one of the AOP guys. But Alexander's back of his head caught the edge of the wood table and it busted open. And you know it was bad when the camera was kept on the left side of the ring and they were on the right side of the ring the entire time. It was, hate- a, it was a lead pipe, by the way. It was a nightstick. <laughs> it was a nightstick he brought into the ring, like a policeman baton nightstick. It was like, it was like the, the ghost of uh, Big Boss Man gave it to him or something. I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, that that table spot was bad. You know, there was a lot of blood when literally they kept the camera on the left side of the ring. They never went back to Alexander Wolf. And at yeah. that point, Alexander or Adam Cole, when you said that 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 spot where he was in the middle of both rings, he climbed to the top, and he was crawling on the edge of the cage, like just crawling yeah, there for a uh, bit. They, they did point out that if he would have jumped off, his team would have been disqualified. Yeah. Which that I was a rule I didn't know. That if if one of your teammates climbed out of the cage and landed on the outside. That they would be automatically just, your whole team's disqualified, which I'm like, oh. But, I didn't but then know that. what happened? Like, how did they get the other two guys out? Like, <laughs> that's I don't know. Like, because like, like they locked it. They locked if, it. No, but that's what I mean. Like, if Roderick Strong like jumped out, like, how are the refs gonna go in there and try to pull AOP out of the match? <laughs> like, no, they're gonna tell him to climb that. the cage. Like, climb it. I don't care how tired you are. Climb it. 
like, good luck getting those two goons out of the cage. Like, yeah. that, I just don't understand how they would go about getting two guys out, but whatever. Right. Anyway, so as Adam Cole's climbing up there, uh, Kyle O'Reilly's just kind of lying there, and Killing Dane takes the other trash can and puts it on his face, climbs up to the top turnbuckle where, where Adam Cole c- climbed to that corner, and he's like, look what I'm about to do to your friend, and he, he gives him a coast-to-coast and, like, smashes the trash can into Kyle O'Reilly's face. Killian Dane like, doing he, a coast-to-coast. He wasn't even wearing the Shane O'Mac Jordans, man. That was insane. That I bet you Shane O'Mac was proud of that coast-to-coast. But uh, this led into an insane spot. Roderick Strong ends up climbing up to where Adam Cole was. And Adam Cole did another Adam Cole baby on the fucking top corner there. <laughs> The crowd just waits for him to put his hand up so they can They don't even it. wait. They just do it the whole match. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You had the goons that do it like the entire match. But Roderick, Roderick Strong was up there to meet him, and they're setting up into a superplex. I'm like, oh, no, please don't. And the crowd's even saying, please don't die. Please don't die. <laughs> and then everyone else is gathering up in the ring, and they do a superplex off the top of the cage onto everybody. <laughs> <laughs> And, there's, and then someone's on top of Adam Cole, so the ref has to count. And then Adam Cole still kicks out after being superplexed off the top of a cage. Like, give me a break. It was pure chaos, this match. It's insane. And yeah, everybody, everybody in the chat wants us to talk about when Killian Dane had his little snack in the ring there. Oh, my God. His little bronze snack. So I, I can't eat believe a that. Yeah, just to eat the beginning of the match when you lock the cage. And then he goes into the middle of the ring, and then he makes sure everyone's looking, and he eats the key. Yeah. Talk about like, okay. taking the key and throwing it away. Yeah, have fun shitting that out later. Hey, guys, I got the key. You guys want it now? Is it an edible key? Like, did he quickly switch keys with the ref? And then, uh... Was it one, yeah. was it one of those, uh, sour keys? <laughs> yeah. So we have breaking news in the chat. Apparently, Triple H was live via Facebook after the match, and he said Drew McIntyre actually is confirmed injured. He suffered a bicep tear yep, in his see, arm. Yeah, I knew yeah. it. Fuck. God damn it. It's the way he landed. I seen it. it didn't. It's why it didn't look right. Wow. That sucks, yeah. man. Anyways, about eating keys. Um, Killing Dane, yeah, eats a key, and oh, he can have fun shitting that out later. And then we get near the end of the match, and I'm like, oh, my God, like, ah, what else can they do in this match? And then... Our, our boy Eric Young grabs a chair and he's looking. He's gonna he's gonna do something with it. But then Adam Cole comes out of nowhere and shining wizards his ass, like just shining wizards <laughs> the chair into his face. And that's the end of the match. Poor Eric Young, man. He was like sitting there, like he's ready to get you. He's like, yes, I'm gonna use this chair, and he gets shining wizard in the face with the chair. He's like, ah, and then just and shining then, wizard. One, two, three, and undisputed era comes out on top. God, Definitely Adam Cole sense. could barely stand up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, the ref was, like, holding. He was, like, shaking yeah. when the ref was, like, trying to hold them up. Either it was a really good sell job or he literally couldn't get up. <laughs> well, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if all nine of these guys needed attention yeah. after the match. Especially Alexander Wolf, man, for God's sake. Yeah. The poor He's guy. Still... I'm, just reading, I'm reading on Twitter right now that the crowd gave him, like, a like a standing ovation when they took him out. Good. <laughs> Guy's got, like, blood everywhere. I think he deserved it. Yeah, because oh. when, he, when they finally patched him up and he rolled back into the match, the crowd's like, wolf, 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 wolf. Because <laughs> literally, because there was one point where he turned around, you could hear it. When the camera wasn't looking, the crowd was like, oh, like they could see all the blood pouring out of his head. Like, he lost a lot of blood this match. But uh, Undisputed Era makes sense for them winning, and then he's still able to do an Adam Cole baby at the end, regardless of how dead he was. <laughs> it's going to go to his deathbed. Doing Adam Cole baby. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone pretty much dead in this match, and we got Killian Dane ready to shit out a key sometime soon. <laughs> and, and we uh, unfortunately have this Drew McIntyre injury, which we knew we called yeah. it that there's something happened there because it didn't look right. That's sad, Which that's so. going to change everything now because if he's out, because bicep no tear is the first major injury. Yeah, so no rematch clause. So the plans are going to be changed for Cian Almas, and we might get a good run for Cian Almas here, man. I think he's ready to go for a good main title run. He's ready, man. He's got the manager. He's he's over with the crowd. I think he's good to go. I think we should roll with him. 
it, well, now McIntyre is not going to get his rematch. Maybe when he comes back. Yeah, maybe there's a different um, champion. I don't know what's going on with him. Maybe he gets called up. Michael Shaw tweeted out uh, after the match. He said maybe he gets called up now. Um, for a complete bicep tear, I'm reading. I'm reading it on Google right now. It's four to six months for a full sports participation. God. So and if if that rehab. if that is true, God. if it's partially to- torn, it could be three to six weeks. But if it's a full tear, it's four to six months. That that would suck for McIntyre, man. I, the guy finally was getting momentum after beating Rude, and then yeah. that happens. So it sucks. It really does suck. But now it's definitely com- like the complexion of the NXT like world title can just change in an instant. Like you look at last last pay per view with Bobby Rude, and then Undisputed Era made a debut. Like when McIntyre beat Rude, it's just like in one night everything can just completely change, like f- be flipped upside down with the title. And now mm-hmm. look at this: McIntyre was a champ tonight. He loses the title and he's injured. And now Almas is going to get a completely new challenger. Yeah, Michael Chavez says, "I wonder if the the, the ending was switched because." I almost looked shocked too. Maybe it was. Maybe that's why he couldn't kick out. Yep. Or maybe that's why he was like, "Yeah, I'm not gonna kick out here because I know I'm fucked." But. <sighs> if he gets called up at like Glory, Glorious Greg just said, I hope he gets. I hope he gets the Broken Dreams theme. Could they get rid of that no. fucking theme song? Drew McIntyre getting called up would be the worst idea imaginable. Keep him in no, NXT. No. He could be. You know, they can do the whole Vince's Golden Boy thing again. <laughs> yeah. Like, Cranio, well, get your get your son out of here. It's all about Drew McIntyre. That landed back. Spot in 3MB getting jobbed. Yeah. <laughs> the crowd even chanted 3MB tonight, and then some of the crowd booed. I would have booed to him. Like, I'm not yeah. chanting this shit. Yeah. Jinder sucks. <laughs> He's got kids, you know. He's Slater, mm-hmm. the only one that's good in that faction. Not. But so anyway, now that we've yeah. reached the end of our TakeOver review, and um, it was a good, good, another great review, shocker. And another great pay per view shocker. Out of five, and, I'm gonna give it a four point five out of five. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a solid four point five too. It, it's shot. It was close. I mean, might even bump it to a four point eight. Like this was a good, good pay per view. Really good. So can't wait to mm. see Survivor Series fail at trying to live up to what we just seen. <laughs> That's what like. It's too bad that NXT couldn't end the weekend. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. But uh, since we're done at the end of the review, I uh, we went and discussed this before the show that you were going to reveal something to me about a certain individual who was just released from the. Oh yeah, and my boy, J- Justice for Ellsworth. Okay, since we're, I guess we can. I can say that we're saving the best for last here. <laughs> so, as discussed on Michael Chow's podcast last night, and I saw it on a on a spoiler as well. I wanted to tell you this. Apparently, Vince had big plans for James Ellsworth. Big One plans. Of big plans were, and it wasn't what I originally thought at WrestleMania, where he's going to win the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, because you know that kind of made sense. He was get this. He was supposed to turn into a woman and face Charlotte in a one-on-one match at WrestleMania as a woman. <laughs> so I can't this... even get behind that, man. I hope you're you're now actually happy he's been released so he doesn't have to go through that. <laughs> and you know Carmella would probably be the one to turn him into a woman, like help him like get a makeover and like I, I'm so glad I won't have to get to see that either, but oh my god, is he really gonna fucking do Santina Morella two point with that? But at least the Santina was in like a multi person battle royal. He would have went on a one on one. Still battle. cringe. That was still stupid. Against Charlotte, you're going to take the fact that you're going to take away a, a, a potential Charlotte versus, uh, or sorry, the, the four horsewomen versus four, four horsewomen match, or even a Charlotte versus Asuka. Give me a break. Oh, my God. I'm so glad he's released. I'm sorry. It, it, that makes me even more happier that he's released. Now he can do. But, like, can you imagine, like, the women's revolution where it's gone, and then they do that, and they just take it back, like, four steps? Vin- exactly, Michael Joe. Vince has lost his fucking mind, man. He's way bad- off the rockers. It was bad enough having Ellsworth grab the briefcase for Carmella. Not only that, now that they had plans for him to do that, I'm so scared for anyone else doing anything else right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, Paige, don't come back. Don't come back. Yeah, we had the the tease of your girl Paige coming back this week, and it never happened. Yeah, well. We'll see. And we already got announced to already tomorrow that Natty's going to be 
the last member of Team SmackDown. Am I shocked? Absolutely not. Can we get crickets for that announcement? Yep. There you go. The Natty being added to the... Like, it's just like, I don't... Why... If they're going to... Oh, my God. If they were going to do a surprise entrant, why not just wait? But I, like you said, we were talking earlier, maybe they do an injury spot, kind of like last year when Natty attacked Nikki Bella to take mm-hmm. her out of the match. Maybe somebody attacks Natty and gets added to the match. Yeah. But. We'll see. We'll see if Surizers can live up to what NXT just delivered. Probably not going to happen, but we'll see what they can attempt at doing because right now I don't see, for some reason, it's been such a good build, but do you actually see Miz and Baron Corbin actually having a good match? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> good build. Probably not going to be a good match. I ra- would have rather seen Seth and Dean against the Usos, but we're getting Cesaro and Sheamus against the Usos, which is probably going to be a semi-decent match. I know Cesaro's going to have to carry a lot because Sheamus can't fucking do shit. Um, and then you have Alexa Bliss versus Charlotte's probably going to be a good match. I'll, I'll give Way that one Way better that. than Natty and Alexa was going to yeah, be. that'll be okay. Um, the Team queen Raw, the goddess, man. You got, so it's right there. You got AJ Styles and Brock Lesnar. It's probably going to be a good match. Regardless of what people are saying about this match, it'll probably be all right. And you got fucking the the senior Survivor Series match. Fucking everyone that's over the age of thirty five going at it each other. And you got it's basically Survivor Series two thousand one. You got Triple H, Kurt Angle, and Shane McMahon in the same fucking match with each other. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see. But NXT for sure. Uh, we're already calling it now. It's going to be the better show. One hundred percent. There's no way Survivor Series tops this, no matter what. No matter what. So I'm glad we got that tonight, and uh, looking forward to the future of NXT. So I'm glad, and, and what we're going to review this. We already know where the main topic of the lowdown show is going to be, and that's going to be D, uh, Pete Dunne and Johnny Gargano. I can't wait for that to happen. Or and when we get more information on this McIntyre injury, because that's huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it'll definitely be like an added thing. Like it's already taped already, so it'll definitely be like a. An added promo because they, they they could you can notice that a lot with NXT if you ever wa- if, you, if anyone watches NXT promos you notice a lot when they you can hear it in like the commentator's voice when something is pre taped and something yeah you can hear it when it's like a backstage um, yeah. tape thing and it's not out in the crowd you can it's yeah. a different it's a different tone yeah so we'll see about that but uh, that's the review guys that's gonna do it for us so again thank you all for being part of the 500 subs we're really really thankful for that to go from what we come from to now so definitely have a 500 sub special coming out to you guys soon so stay tuned for that other than that guys that is going to wrap it up for the nxt takeover war games review right here on a no holds barred wrestling podcast your WWE canadian podcast that talks about the nxt and no holds barred on anything we say pun intended you can follow the podcast on twitter at No Holds Barred WP, you can follow myself at Real Kyle Masters and my co-host at Corporate Cappy on Twitter as well. You can also follow us on Instagram at No Holds Barred WP, all one word. If you want to listen to us on the go, iTunes, Stitcher, and Spreaker is where you can find us. Spreaker is a fantastic podcast app that's available for all Android and Apple devices. So go download it, and you can chat with us live while we are live on the air. Mm-hmm. And you can listen to all previous episodes of the podcast. If you want to watch the podcast and anything more on our video va- base of part of the podcast is all on YouTube, youtube.com slash NHBWR. And make sure you hit that subscribe button and that bell icon for all upload updates. And, and uh, Survivor Series review, you and I both work Monday morning. And it, the way it's shaping up, I really don't think it's going to going to deserve a review but we'll give a review in tweet form how about that <laughs> yeah we we both work monday morning so that, it's not worth staying up for that review yeah. if this was nxt for sure yeah so guys i'm your host self-proclaimed greatest host kyle masters this is the blissful boss mr corporate himself corporate cappy duh and we are signing off